three, two, one. Hello. Hey. My name is Daryl Kelly Carrington. My name's Tim Rowland. My name's Enzanardi. Together we are all doing an FTA Media Foundation course and we all start in a YouTube channel called Date. We started off this uh, the YouTube channel October of 2014. Mm. Um, originally it was to just to um, gain some, some, some form of um, recording experience to get the equipment ready, recording, editing, putting it all together, making a small production just because that's what that's what the course is about and we just wanted a, a bit of a catalogue when we graduated and then a um, couple of I say like a couple of weeks after we started getting views and likes mm -hmm. and stuff like that on yeah. our videos and people really liked our content and really started enjoying what we were putting out so we kept on doing it and lo and behold we became date <laughs> <laughs> Um, because of that, we we decided to do this documentary looking at YouTube as a whole, and we wanted to find out why people are doing it and and why it's become this this crazy trend and this new craze of the 21st century that anybody and everybody wants to and can do YouTube. Um, and anybody, it's it's like the celebrities of the 21st century are YouTubers, and we we wanted to look at that and how easy that is to do and how you go about becoming a famous YouTuber. I wanted to become a YouTuber because I wanted that lifestyle and I wanted that, they, you know, being able to film and be creative in your own way. So um, we will start with um, obviously the idea of whatever um, is trending or whatever we feel passionate about to show. And because we are a group of four, the idea process is it will probably take longer than it would for normal YouTubers who are just on their own because they always have one idea and bam, camera, me, done. But because it's us four, we got to talk about it and if everyone understands, everyone's on the same level, the same thought process, then then we get it and we execute the video. But um, yeah, it goes through the idea and we usually discuss and then create that into some form of comedy content and then um, and then we produce it. Yeah. As far as my videos go, I often spend a few days thinking about it. A lot of people write down, I do write scripts. My last video had a script which I strictly kept to and I think that's why it came out quite well on my hand maybe, I don't know. So following on what Daryl said, the next step from when we've got the idea and it's a solid idea, we then have to get the equipment, which is obviously the camera, the lighting, so forth. and. Um, then it's from getting all the equipment it's then setting up, getting every all the chairs ready, making sure all the shots clean and um, the mic's working because sometimes the mic doesn't work and that leaves you in a problem when you're filming because then if you haven't realised that the mic's not working, mm. it sort of all goes That's uh, screwed. <laughs> yeah, tits up. Um, I always make sure my lighting's correct, I always do test shots because I don't have a flip screen so you know I'm always looking for better equipment. Once we've got the the idea down, the brainstorms, we've got all our equipment that we need, the sound, the lights, the camera. Um, it comes to getting in the room, setting it all up and then filming. And filming is one of the probably the stressful most stressful yet kind of most fun which you would expect from a YouTube video because you, you're gonna do it to enjoy it. But if someone is unsure on what they're saying or is unhappy with how they're looking that day, something as, as little as that, it can it can throw your whole YouTube off. And if we're because we're still students, we're doing this all to a schedule and so we only have kind of maybe an hour or two hours to film and, and do all of the, the kind of previous steps, it, it becomes quite tight and so we discovered that that could be quite a stressful thing of trying to get all the video filmed in the allocated time um, and then packing everything up as well which comes with it, we've got to take all the lights down, take all the cameras down, move the, move the room back to how it was. Um, and if we've got sketches in it, then that throws a whole new ball game out there. Like we've got to move around, find a space that's quiet enough for us to film. That's with, really hard. Yeah, scripting the sketch. Yeah, script and scripting the sketch. Like we've got to make sure we know what we're doing in that, without making it look staged, kind of thing. So, yeah, you find there's a lot, a lot more problems crop up as you're filming that you kind of don't plan for necessarily. Obviously, after that, you go into editing mode editation <laughs> but um, yeah we go to editing mode and basically as long as obviously us being 
um, as we perform, or four people in it, um, we have to come to some sort of compromise and, and um, basically some sort of understanding that whatever gets put out there is, you know, is, is for the, is for the best of the actual video. It's not, you know, if some of, if one of us feels like we might not like this shot of us because of oh well, my hair was sticking out there or whatever, then really and truly it adds to the the authentic side of the video because it's not staged, it's not you know pampered up. We're not in hair and makeup twenty minutes before and then doing the well there you are <laughs> and then doing it and then recording it. So um, but most of the time obviously we um, Enzo edits all of our videos, so. And we've learned to take it on the chin with whatever he does, because he does do a lot of things where you're like, okay, I look a bit crazy. He picks all the bad bits about like when yeah. you look stupid, he just yeah. picks and highlights those. The yeah. thing that I like though about when when I actually do come down to editing, from where we started to where we are now, is from editing like say your face. You like like the first the first couple of videos I edited, you didn't like your face like at the end, so you put a stupid face. I zoomed into that, and the fact that people in the video didn't like it. And then to where we are now, if it's in the video, they don't really care that much. Mm. So it's the confidence that's gained in themselves, especially. It's kind of expected. Yeah. If we, I yeah. think we've decided if it's if it's seen on camera, it can go in, and we we kind of understand that when we sit down in front of the camera and make a video, is I think it's something we we kind of understand about ourselves now. I think that like literally goes into the whole um, like YouTubers in general. You can't really be self-conscious about the way you look, or if you sound crazy or whatever, because the audience are going to pick every little detail out and you've got to be prepared for it you've got to be like okay I know I look stupid there, or I know I look a bit crazy there, or I know I look funny there that's the point but most YouTubers are they're not scared of like if you watch prime example Miranda Sings everyone knows she's um, not real but mm. <laughs> But she literally enhances every flaw within the character, like her her speech, the way she looks, her the camera angles. Basically, she breaks every rule. But because it works for her, and because that's what YouTube is about, it's about being raw. It's not about being high glam. What we see on daily basis on a te on TV mm -hmm. is about the raw gritty of someone producing videos, which engages the audience to be like, I can do that if. That person looks that way and acts crazy, and I'm a bit loopy, and you know, I can do it. I like YouTubers because I think uh, I think they're good people because they're self-made. They uh, just did it on their own, and they're good at it to uh, good enough at it to have it as the job. Another thing to be aware of when kind of making a YouTube channel and and having a YouTube channel is the the comments, the likes, the the shares, and obviously the subscribers you get, because they are all a vital part of your YouTube channel, and they are what are going to kind of basically create it and and propel it into the next kind of stage. Um, and as an early YouTube channel, we're obviously on minimal kind of likes and comments, but we accept that because we're smaller and they're still helping us grow because we are still kind of getting more and more subscribers and more comments on different videos and more likes on different videos. But with that, you've kind of got to take the hate, and I think that that makes kind of a YouTuber is is the hate that they get or the the support that they're getting, and how they're kind of putting that in back into their YouTube stuff. Because if you're letting hate get down on you and and stopping you create videos, you're not gonna make you're not gonna be making content and putting out there and support and and giving content to the people who want to see it. Whereas if you're taking it as kind of feedback and to, to mould your videos and change the angle that you're shooting from or change the light that you're shooting from or change how you're saying things it's gonna again propel your videos up another stage and make them better in themselves and so I think it's you've got to take the hate kind of not as hate but as feedback to help you make your videos better and if it's just downright horrible just don't pay attention to it because there are people that are going to support you there and focus on that and at the end of the day you need those people because they are the people liking it and sharing it and subscribing to your channel and your channel's only going to grow because of those people like at the end of the day YouTube is a business nowadays mm -hmm. people are making serious money and a living off of being on YouTube I think there's evidence that people can make a living off being a YouTuber 
but only if they keep on top of it because you get some YouTubers that are committed to putting out videos every single week and the audience know when it's going to come out but then you have people that attempt to do these video blog things and they'll start to flag there won't be one every week though it'll be like once a month and people just kind of give up so it depends how committed they are but I do think that I you know I know of people who make a living from it Tim said a, a key word actually like um, he said that YouTube is a business because really and truly it is and the whole likes shares comments subscribe are literally what is like uh, is, is the gas is the thing that propels you to the next the uh, next step i think youtube has grown over the past kind of five to ten years just because everywhere now is videos and online and social networking so i mean i mainly watch youtube videos through facebook and twitter sort of thing so um yeah i think it's definitely grown and i think it's going to grow even more as time passes it is with any small business if you're like self-employed any small business that you do you're going to need things that are the same as comments likes shares because you know if you're a new business you want your business to be out there you're promoting it you're doing this you're doing that things like comments likes shares all that that's your money that's your word of mouth that's your publicity all of that is what it takes to be from a little youtuber to the big dogs you know earning the big money and whatnot obviously subscribers and likes and comments and shares are all nice they're all perks and they're nice things to have you know see someone's left a nice comment or someone's liked or someone's shared i will often go on their twitter and follow them i don't do it for that reason i don't think i'm gonna upload this video because it's gonna get so many likes but it, it does it's almost like you know well done thank you it, it's so it's like someone telling you you've done a good job and with youtube being a business as it is growing bigger and bigger every single day You've got more businesses attaching onto YouTube, so now you've got Twitch now uh, um, connected to YouTube. You've got your Twitter connected to YouTube. You've got Google, the main connection of YouTube. So it's millions and millions of pounds getting going into YouTube, which is obviously very attractive to a lot of people, not just YouTubers, but obviously people that um, are having their own business who business. have been yeah have been having a business for years. And now they see like another place where they can put their business on the platform and expose. That's why YouTubers are now are being in um, communications with people who endorse them basically. So they're mm -hmm. giving them free stuff to say, put this in your videos and share for you know publicity wise, and then you get a cut of the income and whatnot. But really and truly, they they're getting the, the real money. Um, yeah, so it's just like a a national hand-holding community. YouTube, YouTube is literally a community of business where people are leaning on other people to gain and to get to the top. Mm. Yeah, it, st it starts out as your passion. creativity and your passion to just to make something silly or serious or funny or anything and has now then become this massive corporation who are funding YouTube channels who are funding companies who are advertising the, some of the biggest companies in the world I mean I don't know if you can watch a video without an ad popping up at the beginning of it or without an ad being attached to the side of it and mm -hmm. to see such a small thing that people just put crappy little three minute videos on or whatever to start off with mm -hmm. become this mass production almost advertising agency it's almost become that the amount of ads you see on it and so if you see a YouTuber putting ads in their videos, that's why, because it's a way of them making money to propel their, their channel. The number of hours people are watching YouTube videos is raising 50% year over year. I probably watch about an hour a day, maybe an hour and a half. I spend probably about half an hour a day on YouTube. It's not like I have a ritual, but you know, I do find myself on the website at night. I probably spend a couple of hours a day on YouTube. <laughs> But I don't know, I spend an average on YouTube about probably about five, six hours a day. It was shown in 2014 that the top searches are music videos and Minecraft games. The most viewed industry on YouTube, i.e. tutorials, in 2014 were the ele electronic videos. In 2014, the most viewed YouTube video was the popular song 
Gangnam Style with over 2 billion views. Half of YouTube videos were on mobile devices in 2014, i.e. such as, well, obviously, mobiles, and you have your iPods, iPads, any other mobile devices. I watch YouTube because I like to watch humorous, funny videos, and I like to watch videos of dogs as well. I watch YouTube for... Uh, couple different reasons I like watching like music stuff uh, music stuff like live videos and tutorials and stuff and then I like watching gaming videos as well I spend my time on YouTube watching vlogs and gaming videos I watch YouTube mainly because my three-year-old likes watching YouTube I watch YouTube because all the stuff on it is more entertaining than what's on TV uh, but yeah thank you for watching bye, bye. bye.